welcome to Mondo Agora on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Anything I say in this podcast is not endorsed by anyone but myself. This is just my podcast. And uh, I'm talking about something that's kind of personal you know, between each individual. Because everybody's got a different kind of relationship with this guy. Now, I'm talking about Stephen Long go into that whole situation here and the reason I'm doing so is because it seems like everybody that I know that uh, that likes Stefan Molyneux or watches videos and stuff they have this one certain type of relationship with his his material and that is watching the videos and um uh, you know, sometimes watching some of his speeches or something, watching interviews that he's done with other people or when he hosts another person's show or something. But most people I know, including myself, who watches a ton of podcasts, do not watch his or watch, do not listen to his podcast. And yeah, that's that's basically uh, what I gotta say right now. I'm gonna go into a lot deeper during this podcast. But, um, yeah, stay tuned, see what you think. But I, this is for everybody who thinks the way I do. Uh, maybe we can find some solidarity here. And bring a, a new perspective. You know, most, most of the people, they're either the hardcore Moloniacs or uh, it seems like a lot of the liberty movement has kind of turned against it really way. So, this is us in between, fellas. Check it out. I just want to speak for a few minutes and get something off my mind. Um, this is, you know, relevant to the, the time we're living in, I suppose. And that's why it's really kind of it's been a lot on, it's been on the radar a lot lately, and it's, it's been pretty much impossible to miss. And what I'm referring to is the whole step of the whole situation. And maybe you're like, well, where do you get off talking about it? You don't know the guy, you, you know, you've commented on him in your other podcast, maybe, so you've obviously watched some of his stuff. And I have, and I've, I've been a pretty big fan of Stefan Manu for several years. Um, sorry about that, it's the dog. Um, as far as he goes, and what I have to say about him is, you know, I've, you in general, really like him, not so much as podcast. Been a huge fan of Stefan Ma New Freedom Man podcast. I tried to listen to it several times, and every time I tried to listen to it, instead of talking about you know anarchy or libertarianism or you know news, something that would be interesting to me, they have somebody calling in and somebody whining about their parents or something, and I, I couldn't even I couldn't stomach it. Honestly, I thought it was boring as sin, and I'm, I've never completed an episode of this podcast. But I love his videos. I think his videos are great. So, a couple, um, a couple days ago, I was listening to a podcast. It was the uh, Joe Rogan podcast. And ironically, this was actually posted on YouTube by Stefan Mahmoud on his channel. And, you know, I've, I've watched all the other videos of <clears throat> Stefan Mahmoud on Joe Rogan's podcast. I've enjoyed them. Uh, I've enjoyed watching, you know, Adam Kokesh when he was up there. It's really cool when I see a Liberty person up there. I really like it because I know the message is getting out there to a broad audience. And, um, you know, it's going like the usual, the usual conversation between the two. And then Joe Rogan starts asking them the uh, the tough questions, as you could say. And they didn't really seem all that tough to me. 
to begin with. You know, he's asking him questions about the uh, cult accusation, which is a perfectly legitimate thing to pick up as, as far as I thought. I thought it was something that, you know, he could build something that's, that's definitely been brought up before. And what I noticed when he was having this conversation with Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan experience was um, he seemed a little nervous during that portion of the interview. I think that's just my opinion. It seemed a little like he was being interrogated. And I even, at first I thought like, Maybe some of these questions seem unfair. And then, uh, you know, they start talking about this relationship between Stefan Molyneux and this, this woman that he criticized, who has been talking to Joe Rogan, because I guess he, they both know him. Um, and actually, I saw that video that Stefan Molyneux posted about this woman. And it was a response to her from what she said about Adam Carolla. I don't know her name. And, you know, I thought it was a a great rebuttal to her. I mean, it was fine. I mean, she made some very stupid observations and points, and he corrected her on it. And to me, that was, I mean, that's fine. That's what he does. It's kind of point out things that other people miss. I'm not saying that he's infallible. I, I never would say that. Um, another thing is these people that's been going off the handle with these Truth About series. I think people were taking the name too literally. It's, it's more of a... It's fact-based. You know, they have um, all the facts that can possibly found in there trying to make a decision. But of course he has his own opinion as like the, uh, the general outcome. Like how he sees all this stuff coming together. It's his show, you know. I'm, if you believe 100% about what anybody says without questioning, without looking stuff up, I mean, it's your own fault. And you look at his, his Truth About series and take away the true bits, you know, the, the facts that he actually gives. And if he gives out a fact that seems um, crazy, some people point out his, his video about slavery was kind of out there. And I don't know, I haven't actually watched that one. So I need to I need to get on that I suppose, but um, yeah, I'm not trying to defend Stefan Molda with this podcast. I'm not trying to attack him either, but it seems like a lot of people in the Liberty Movement have turned their back on it really quick before I think all the information is out there. And yeah, I think something kind of fishies up. It seems like it, it seems like he was hiding something, but I. You know, I can't be 100% sure about that. He says that he was trying to, like, when he pulled down the, uh, the YouTube channels of the other people, um, the other users, I don't know who they were, they pulled down two or three YouTube channels. And he said it was because they were taking the personal data of free domain users and, I guess, put them on the internet or something, so to go doxing not really my scene, so I don't really know much about it. Anywho, he says that he pulled it down for that reason. They say that he pulled it down for, um, you know, because they were being critical. And people, you know, he's built this group of people around him, and he doesn't like to criticize. And, they don't like, you know, and that's really dark. Like, that's what's going on. That's, that's really not good. But something I've thought about, and nobody has really brought this up, is 
what if it was one of these groups doing this, but he didn't know which one, so he took down a few of them using his copyright law. And maybe that's just making an excuse for him. Um, I don't think that, that would do any good, though, if, if that was how people were getting the data from these people. I mean, the stuff was there anyway. It was in his podcast that he put out there on the internet so anybody could get this stuff. Um, it feels like he was protecting himself. Sad to say. But uh, let me kind of go into a little bit of history between me and Stefan Bond and, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Never met the guy, as I said before. Don't know him. I've, in general, always liked him. In general, in general always liked him. Okay, um, I was already when I heard about Stephen Bond. And surprisingly, when I first heard about Stephen Bond, it was because he was being called a cult leader. This was a long time ago. This was not, um, you know, any time the last couple months or anything. This was several years ago before he was really, really well known in delivery. I'm not saying that because I'm some kind of hipster, you know, I'm not trying to say, like, I was there before everybody else. Like, I, if you go watch, like, his earlier videos, like, the lower quality, just him in the red room, it was, like, with a camera attached to his computer or something. It's really lo-fi. I think he has a, a headset on or something. I mean, it was around that time. It was, you know, early in his producing career. Not at the very beginning. You know, I didn't know him or anything. I, like, I came across um, an article or something saying that there was this cult leader in Canada driving people away from their family. And, you know, he had something to do with libertarianism. And they were using it as in a way, it seemed like they were using it to me as a way to demonize libertarianism. And it was really frightening for me when I first heard this. I mean, somebody using libertarianism as an excuse to, to do something Jim Jonesy is is not going to do our movement any favors, right? Okay, so in the article, they linked to a video. This was, you know, an internet article. And it was a video of Stefan Molyneux talking, and I'm guessing they didn't expect people to actually watch the video. The video was about an hour long, maybe a little longer. I mean, it wasn't short. And I remember I watched the whole thing, and I was like, I'm gonna figure out if this guy's actually a cult leader. Like, if he, because, you know, I've read some books on it, it's kind of an interesting topic, you know. And when I started watching the videos, he wasn't coming off as a cult leader to me. And he wasn't telling people, they, they were saying that he was specifically telling people to leave their family in the video. And that's not really what he said. You, know, you watch the whole thing, take the whole thing in context. He's saying, distance yourself from people that, that want to do you harm. Even if it's like a political thing. If you're really passionate about it, then there's a, a point where you're going to have to kind of Choice. And that sounds a little extreme, but I mean, is it? Um, it didn't seem to me like he was telling people that he can't associate or talk to parents anymore if they disagree. It kind of sounds like he said that behind the scenes, though, just recently. But I don't think publicly there was any real information that he really pushed this kind of thing. I mean, he, but he mentioned it. It wasn't something that was completely hidden, so if it came up, you know, maybe it, it's not that bad for him. It's like just a secret explaining away, like, yeah, I've talked about this before. But then you get into this whole, how can you trust these people that are saying this stuff? I mean, do we really know if they're actually some of this quote unquote inner circle? I've been doing this podcast. Um, it's been going on not just the podcast, but radio shows. 
cut their head off. I think somebody came on an interview on Freedom Beans. Some chick, I don't know her name, she does a video on her channel, some of her videos. <coughs> and I went looking for the interview she did, I couldn't find it, but I found an interview that uh, someone else did with Free Talk Live. And, yeah, to me, I think, I think it was Ian Freeman, I think he's the host of Free Talk Live. I'm not a huge fan of, of that show. He kind of comes off to me as a little bit pompousy. I guess that sounds kind of a douchebag thing to say because I don't, I don't know the guy. I just, I've tried to listen to a few of his podcasts and, you know, I've really never been able to get into them. Not for the same reason I've never been able to get into stuff at all. So he doesn't put out videos or anything he made, but none that I've seen and really affected me. I know I've heard he's done a lot for the Free State Project and everything. He's, he's really high up in that group. But, um, you know, I've got no personal connection to him. So I don't generally listen to Free Talk a lot, is what I'm saying. I listen to this interview, and it seemed to me that he really, you know, I'm going to put words in his mouth, he, uh, he's not really happy with, with a lot of the stuff that Steph Obama has been, I guess, accused of, but it's something that he's been kind of accused of for a very long time, and it seems to me that he took him off of LRN without talking to Stefan or doing some sort of interview and kind of putting it and making it all public, which I think is what they should have done. I know it's his private property and everything they can do what they want, but you know, Stefan Lana has been there in the Liberty Bowl for, for years and he's done a lot of good. You know, I think some of his arguments for libertarianism are really good. And people started writing them off recently just because they gave him, you know, which is ridiculous. That, I mean, that's, I mean, it's, it's wrong. I mean, I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying he's not a cult leader. I'm saying he is a cult leader. What I'm saying is, no matter what he turns out to be, I don't think it discounts all that he has done. If some of the stuff that people have said about him turn out to be true, as far as the uh, you know disconnect from your family, associate with this group of people here only, they had people. I guess they had a, one of the people they interviewed said that he moved to Pittsburgh. I think it's Pittsburgh with a group of other uh, a, a whole group of. Free domain listeners, and they kind of start living the free domain lifestyle, whatever that means. And I don't, I don't really understand why people would choose to do that if they're liberty minded, if they got the, the voice of liberty, even if they heard it through Stephen Mullen. Why would they, like, why would they want to join this this group like that? That doesn't make much sense to me. If you want to be around people that believe in freedom and stuff, you can stand in the cold. I mean, step on is in the If you're going to do that, you might as well just move to the Hampshire and the Free State Project, which is it's, it's great because there's no, like, there's no figurehead. There kind of is, but a lot of people in the Free State Project might not even know who they are. Because they don't really matter. I mean, it's, as far as the movement goes, the free domain thing is. It is basically Stephen Molyneux's organization, which is fine. But if they got this weird family thing, and they're kind of cutting people off, and he's getting people to send them money, which, you know, in the internet business is okay, I guess, people send you money to survive on. But if they're sending you money and they don't have, you know, like they work, to pay you money if it gets to that point. And I'm not saying that that's what's going on because I don't even know if that's the accusation. I don't really understand what the, uh, 
the the terrible accusations of art, because everything's been kind of muddy. But what I do know, and I know I don't like, is him pulling down those YouTube channels. I mean, he used the government to do it. It's a clear violation of the stances that he's been promoting for years. And if, I believe, as he has said, you know, if you, if somebody violates their core value of beliefs, you really can't trust them. You don't know what they're going to do. Because their core value of beliefs are really only rules for other people, not really for themselves. And it would be a shame if that turned out to be the case with them. Because, as I said, you know, I've been a really big fan of him, so I'm kind of disappointed in all this, how everybody's in it, how he can how um, reactionary some of the, the people in the Liberty Movement have been, you know, to the point of completely cutting him off the same side. And uh, I don't think it really needs to go that far. If, uh, if he did do all this stuff and they, they do need to cut him off, fine, but they need to get the specific details out first. They need to at least make an effort you know, that they're trying to clear this up, they're trying to talk to them, they're not just outright believing these detractors without looking at all of the evidence. You know, people made a big deal about him lying on the Joe Rogan show about his wife being reprimanded for this, for, I guess, suggesting the fooling, which is the disconnecting from it. And I don't know. I mean, if he's just trying to defend his wife, maybe he didn't think about it that much. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. But it's still a lie. But it's not nearly as bad to me as the pulling down of the YouTube channels, which were, you know, he were taken off because they were using his content. His, um, IP. Which he says he doesn't believe in. And that really bothers me. And uh, I kind of I thought about just putting this together because I, I think there's probably a lot of other people out there like me who have listened to stuff along through the years and don't really know what to do. Or, you know, the little guys that have heard him not really listen to his, his podcast of people calling and whining. I don't know how else to put it. It sounds like people call and whine to him. People out there that don't listen to that but watch his videos and take something away from him and not necessarily, you know, like, this guy is correct about everything. Uh, we should only believe what he puts in his videos. But people who watch his videos because there is good information in them and they're entertaining. And they, they kind of bring a different point of view than people are used to seeing. People like that, they don't really have a voice or a dog in this fight. They're, no, they're me, you know. I, I just want to know how much we can trust. I don't know, is it wrong to ask how much we can, we can trust Stefan Molyneux? I mean, shouldn't we know by now? I kind of thought I could trust him, and that's... I mean, it feels like we've all been betrayed. And I, that sounds harsh, because he's never once made a promise to me. Even when, even though I was an anarchist before I ever heard anything about Stephen Long, when I first heard his, his arguments for it, it was still shocking to me because it was so 
in your face, you know, it was so, like, I don't want to say aggressive, but it jumped right to the point, you know, cut right to the bone, and I thought it was, it was great, it was something that was needed, and it was, I mean, it was shocking to me at the time, and that was good, I thought, because it was something that could rattle people out of their cages, and... Yeah, that's why I've, I've kind of kept watching stuff. Even though I don't think... I still think the universal, universally preferred behavior is um, philosophy. It, it is basically just the non-aggression principle. Restate, you know, it's just saying it's an unspoken social contract. It's, it's not really a mind-blowing theory to me, I never thought it was. But if some people can understand it better than, than the non-aggression principle, I never found anything wrong with it, you know? And to see, I don't know, some people take it so far. And when I'm talking about him, his, his listeners, you know, if they, if they really join, you know, because they thought, like, why? He was right all the time. I mean, I was a huge, huge Murray Rothbard Ford fan. But, uh, um, you know, I don't know. I would, I would, yeah, I would probably move into a house with other Rothbardians. But, we wouldn't, you know, be living by this strict. Walker Moth Part 2 lifestyle. You know, it, to make a person a figurehead, it seemed like it seemed like he was pushing the idea of liberty. And that's what's so perplexing to me. And he's pushing the idea, but people were following him. And maybe not like maybe he wasn't always like that. Maybe this like calling him a cult leader years and years ago has perpetuated to the point where he actually kind of became one. In a way, I'm not saying he actually is. As I said, I've liked a lot of the stuff that he's done. I plan to keep watching his videos and stuff as long as he keeps producing them. Unless I hear something just unforgivable. And, you know, I'm not angry at Stefan Molyneux for anything right now, but I am disappointed. I'm disappointed in his definite violation of our code, the voluntarious code, and not <coughs> leaving an IP. Right? That's almost a core tenet of voluntarianism now. And, you know, he's been a, a major, major proponent of the system. He's, he's brought a lot of people to the fold. And to violate it. It feels like, you know, like things have been cheapened, something's been taken away. I'm disappointed. Anyway, what do you guys think? It's kind of had to get that off my chest. I just want to say really quick that if uh, anybody is. Well, they jumped really deep into the whole Molyneux camp thing, and uh, they've been sucked into the, um, I guess, the inner circle, as some of these people have been calling it. If you're looking for an alternative, I'd say almost the exact opposite would be uh, Robert Anton Wilson. Raw, read some Raw. It'll do you some good because uh, you know he's agnostic about everything. Not. You know, this is the truth about anything. The grass appears green to me. So, check it out. And you know, he's dead, so... There's no way he can get you into a cult. Even though I'm pretty sure he's been accused of that. He's got a really weird history to him. Check him out. Peace.